Hello, my name is Patrick Fletcher and I'm a data analytics consultant here at Blue Margin and I'm going to be walking you through our produce distribution dashboard. Just to note, this is all fake client data, um, so none of this is accurate directly from our clients. So our first page is going to be our sales overview. Um, as we like to have on every page is going to be this last refresh date here. Moving to the right, we're going to be looking at our main sales here. This is going to be the total sales amount for the company and then we're going to be looking at total total orders so that just kind of gives a quick out, outlook of the main metrics that we're going to be looking at for this dashboard overall the main goal when looking at this dashboard is really how much how many sales and how many orders are coming in for each sales rep and then each customer as well we want to be looking at this over time and we want to be looking at this by separate dates so one of the key components within this within this dashboard is looking at one specific date here and then also looking at a comparison period. So this can be set to a year, different years, different months, different days, different weeks. So there's a lot of different visibility within this that you can look at. And so that was a key component when we developed this is during these two month periods from different years, where do they track? Are they the same? Are they different? How, how much are they off? So starting on our main visual here, we're going to be looking at number of sales, and then we're also going to be looking at numbers of orders. This is going to be looking at it over time. So this is going to be looking at it on a month level here. And if we month and week level here, if we drill up, this is going to be looking at it on the total month level based on our date filter here. And then this is going to be looking at it by the quarter we have filtered and then this will be looking at it by the year. So our main metric that we want to be looking at, our main visual here, we want to be looking at a sales amount by number of orders over time. Looking at this, this is going to be broken down by the week, the end of the week value here. But if we drill up one level, we're going to be looking at it on the month level here. <clears throat> if we want to expand our date, if we wanted to change it, we can do that here. This previous compare period date filter is only going to be looking at this lower section here. <clears throat> one of the biggest components that we wanted to look at with this report is having it broken down by direct sales reps, customer names, item IDs, and then item descriptions. So the ideal purpose of this report is to have sales reps and then their managers come in and be able to look at this specifically to see how well the rep is doing and for if they're a manager, the reps that they manage, how they're doing. So this is, can also be implemented with row level security, which would allow for direct users to only see their data when they log in to view this report. Um, <clears throat> as we expand down, um, this gets broken down into these metrics here. So customer name, customer ID, item description, and then every single sales rep here is going to be looked at, can be looked at based on all of these metrics here. So we're going to be looking at total sales amount here, and then that compare period sales amount, which is based on this date section here. Um, and then same with sales variance. This is going to be the difference of the two values here. And then this is going to be color conditioned and with an icon to basically show is that positive sales growth or negative sales amount on that. It's going to be the same exact thing for number of cases sold. Um, as this is a produce dis distributor, um, they really focus on cases and the case amount. So there's whole cases, split cases, and those kind of just sum up to get our total values there. We also have a case variance here to see the difference. And then we have average metrics also. So average cases sold per order um, during this period and then also the compare period. And then we also have average sales price per item and then same with the compare period and then just total number of orders that each of those sales reps has have. As we expand down and we drill down, this is gonna show our customer name here. So Welch, Nelson and Jones is gonna be our customer. As we expand down even further, we're going to see the ship to name from that customer. So it's going to be um, all these specific locations. And then if we expand down one more level, we're going to see all the items that they've sold. And then if we expand that, it's going to show us the item, the specific item description of what they've sold to that customer. So when looking at watermelon chunks, we can see that they're up, they've made about $2,700 more. 
um, based on these compare based on the compare period that's selected. Um, and as always, to get back up, you can just right click, collapse all. So this is some of the direct functionality that we have built into to this page here. It allows for a lot of granular details based on those customers um, and specific items. Moving on to the next page, we're going to look at open orders. This is really just going to be looking at a lot of the same metrics, but in an open order state. So an order that was input and is still being processed, waiting to be shipped out, um, kind of any in those categories there. If we look here, we're going to be looking at the same metrics here, total sales that are open orders, and then number of open orders that are going on based on this date filter. So this is currently looking at the last 10 months. <clears throat> this is going to be that same visual. This is looking by the week here, so week ending date. Um, that's how it's broken down, but it can also be drilled up to be looking on the month level. When looking at this <clears throat> order detail by customer, customer ship to, and then sales order number here, we're going to be starting off with the customer name and looking at open order sales amount and then number of open orders for that specific customer. As we drill down here and we continue to go, it will eventually get us down to that open order number. So that sales, that open order sales order number. So um, you could directly connect this to your ERP and find that item if you have any questions on that. Moving over to the open order item detail, this just allows a granular look at which items have the most open orders um, based on the sales amount, number of orders that are included in that, how many of that item are being ordered, and then the average sales price of that open order. So this could help directly change some of the pricing. Um, if there is an item with a higher influx, that could really help directly change if you should make the price higher or lower. Moving on to the item detail. This is going to be a very direct, granular look at all of the item categories and then the items within those categories as well. We're going to be looking at all sales and then the number of orders associated with each group. So to start, um, we have this customer slicer. This allows for if you wanted to look at a specific customer of yours um, to see how they were doing, that's an option there. Um, and then also there is a date filter. This is looking at the last six months currently. Dropping down to this main visual here, this is just going to be the main item categories. This is how they are grouped by the total number of sales. As we can see, vegetables and fruits are some major outliers. And then also looking at the number of orders that have been processed. Dropping over to this side on the right, we're going to be looking at item sale details by item class. We're going to be looking at the class specifically, so it's going to be more granular detail with some actual numbers that we can see quickly. Um, so this is going to be defaulted to being open, but this is going to show that item. So carrots um, is going to be a high sale item for vegetables. And then same with um, item quantity. That's going to be a high amount as well. Um, if you click into another category, such as fruits, then that will filter all of the visuals on the page. If you expand fruits, then it's going to show the most sold within each of those categories. To get back to that spot you can just click the same metric or the same category you clicked on before and it will reset moving down to these lower items here we're going to be looking at top 20 items and then bottom 20 items and then also number of items sold by the item class so starting here is this is going to be the top 20 by this sales amount sold here um, and then we can also look at item quantity so we can see strawberries is the highest sold product out of anything and then looking at these bottom 20, it's usually just going to default to anything with zero amount of sales or anything with a very limited amount of sales there. Moving to the right side, we're going to be looking at the same item class number as up here, um, which can be expanded down to that item level. But this is going to be looking at the highest number of orders that have taken place and then also the number of quantity of items that are sold total. Moving on to the customer detail, this is going to be a very granular detail into the number of customers and then also the number of ship to customers that this client has. So, so we're going to start off, this is a three month period. Our previous compare period is also going to be a three month period, but it's going to be cutting off on that September 30th date. So we'll be able to see three months and then three months after it within our regular date. 
This is structured by number of customers that are within the organization and then the number that they ship to. So say there's one big client who has 50 different locations that are shipped to, this is a good way to track it. Moving now to average cases per customer, this is gonna be looking at the customer name and then that customer ship to name that's associated with the parent record. This is gonna be looking at average cases sold per order and then it's gonna be looking at the compare period that we have from up here. And then this is also gonna be looking at average cases variance. So how much has the growth happened within those three months different? How many cases were sold per order to this specific customer? And then same thing on this visual to the right, this is gonna be looking at the direct customer name and then the customer ship to name, but it's gonna be looking at sales, sales from that compare period, and then what has really changed for that specific. So if we click on gross pots as the customer name, this visual will filter to the right, and we will see that within the different three months periods, they have been down by $51,000. So this, this allows a lot of quick filtering, a lot of capabilities into just looking at discrepancies that there could be within the data. Um, overall, overall, this report offers a lot of detailed granularity into sales numbers, number of sales, um, and then also just overall customer amounts as well. This can really help display outliers within item groups as well, and then see which products are doing well versus doing poorly. So overall, this dashboard and set of reports can allow for a lot of detailed granularity into overall how a produce company is doing um, based on each sales rep. So thank you, and I hope you enjoy this video.